never ever have enough time to play at all You know everybody wants to walk in someone else's shoes Everyone's forgot who they are Welcome to Otter Creek in Rio Grande, where I'm getting ready to start finalizing some of the wiring going back to Silver Gulch. I've got several things laid out here. I've got my loco net. I've got the electricity. I've got the block detection wire, and I need to run another Cat 5, Cat 6 for the LCC back there and then make it to where all of those things interface as well, kind of split off and go to frying pan. And then some of it, at least for sure, the electricity, I need to make electricity for what's gonna take place here on my temporary staging yard. So stay tuned and see what happens.
Well, that was nearly a full day's worth of work condensed to about eight minutes. So here's, here's what I've got accomplished. I've got a receptacle here, here, and then another receptacle off over here, all on the same on-off switch. And of course you watched all of my wiring run and that worked out pretty good. We pan over here. So nearly all of my wiring originates from back over yonder underneath the staging yard. And I didn't get the idea of the PVC pipe until after I had kind of done some things. So my first PVC pipe doesn't happen, of course you can't see it, until right here. And then the rest of them are, I don't know, they're three or four feet apart. They worked out pretty good. And after I get all of that exactly where I want it, I'll go in with some zip ties and clean it up a little more. But right now I'm gonna leave everything a little loose. I've got some slack on either end with everything except the electricity so that I can kind of manipulate things a little more. Now let me show you what I've done uh, that I didn't film. So this is the underneath side of Silver Gulch. I've got my power coming in from that receptacle there to here. And I've got my two nodes attached to this board and there's my incoming LCC bus going to a PowerPoint. I still don't know if this works or not yet. It's my first Cat5 cable that I've created. Uh, I don't have the PowerPoint for my RR circuits PowerPoint. I've lost it. I've lost <laughs> the power wards I had for my stall motor driver. I can't find them anywhere. I've been looking for the last three days and I'm afraid that in all of my disorganization and cleaning, they may have ended up in a cardboard box that got thrown in the trash. So what I'm gonna have to do is rob the power supply from the time saver so now it's going to be even more derelict in its ability to provide any kind of entertainment for me, but that'll be okay. So all I have left to do here is, is literally provide power to the PowerPoint for the LCC and the stall motor driver. Once I get that done, this should all be working with the exception of the push buttons. This is the command and control center of the layout. And I've added this box and there will be another box right here. And here's the brains. This is my Raspberry Pi that runs JMRI and my computer that's just there to the right. My goal, of course, is to be able to turn on the entire layout from one location, which is a little complicated just given the size and the scope and even how I'm building it because I'm kind of building it from the wrong end, I guess you would say. When you turn things on, there's a sequence and it should start with the computer first. You're supposed to turn the computer on, then JMRI, and then your LCC nodes. And I'm not sure that the DCC really matters where you turn it on. But I, I want to create a, a panel here, my switches that kind of go in sequence that make sense. Unfortunately, I didn't consider that part of it until after I got this put on. So I've got one more box to put here. So I'll have a total of six switches. The far switch on this end closest to the computer will be the on and off switch for the computer and anything else that I decide to run off 
of the multi-plug that will go in there associated with it. And it will be all on its own circuit. This switch will be the DCC, will be the, uh, the main command station and any associated boosters. And then from here, that way will be the, all the LCC stuff. So this is staging yard. Right now it's on its complete own circuit. So two is the staging yard, three is the peninsula. So all three of the receptacles that I put in earlier all run off of this switch. And that will include uh, the temporary staging yard right up above here where my computer is. Number four will take care of everything on top of the staging. The, I guess you could call it the second level, if you will, which will be the east wall and the north wall. The fifth switch that will go right here will take care of the south wall and the west wall. And then of course, as mentioned, my sixth switch will be over here will be the computer. Next step for me is to go ahead and apply the power to my node board there underneath Silver Gulch. Check my wire connection, see if that long LCC bus is gonna work. And once I see if I've got that node showing up in my computer, then uh, I will start to work on the push buttons and getting that ready to go. Bravo 3, that is Silver Gulch. I'm going to go ahead and open it up and name it. All right, that's all I'm going to do for now. The next order of business is to go ahead and get the push buttons set up for this. And I've got a UP7 panel I'm gonna put in here so I can make use of the throttle right here at Silver Gulch. Before I get started on that project, I'm gonna to have to do something about the layout room. I've reached my tipping point on the disorganization and filth in my workspace. I'm gonna to have to clean. So I'm gonna grab a cup of coffee and set a timer for an hour and clean.
panels finished. <laughs> you can see I did not go to any kind of extravagant extremes to make it look nice. I literally just wanted something that's going to work for now. Like my other two panels and staging, this will get replaced with something nice. I just still haven't figured out what that is. So just in case there's, you know, anybody watching that's a little confused about what I'm doing, I'll start by saying I'm making use of LCC. And I've got several videos in my playlist where I kind of go in depth on that. And I don't want to say too much here. If you're interested, you know, go back and find those videos where I talk a little more about it. But basically all these push buttons are inputs going into the LCC system. This ribbon cable coming from here to my tower LCC is where the brains are and that's what's over there underneath Silver Gulch. So I've got seven inputs here and then I've got seven turnouts on the layout and those will be configured as outputs. So each one of these push buttons is gonna be telling those turnouts whether to go diverging or non-diverging. It's, it's really that simple. I'm just using a fancy device to get it done with. So I've got one more ribbon cable to make. just about ready to mount my panel and last thing I need to do before I actually go put anything on is go ahead and test my ribbing cable. Our R circuits makes this handy dandy little test board. You can see it's both got a male and female socket so you can either go into a board or you can make use of this. So all I have to do is plug that in and if I've got all of those lights, it means that all of my wires are connected properly and everything's talking like it should. Okay, I thought I would attempt to go ahead and configure one push button and one tortoise in real time just to kind of show you guys how this is done. So this is the 16 different lines available in my tower LCC at Silver Gulch. This line one, which I have labeled West Main one, is the first turnout that you encounter coming into town. So I've decided to name it West Main one. And of course this whole thing deals with everything in Silver Gulch. So you type in what you want it to be, and then you hit right, and then it does. Next is you get to choose between being an output or an input. And since this is a tortoise, we want this to be an output and we want it to be a steady output. Okay, now we have low or high. And right now it's set to low. So just because I'm gonna set it to high,
And I don't know if you could hear that, but what just happened is that tortoise just fired and switched the points. And if I go to low, it moves back. So you can control the diverging or non-diverging route simply by changing this from high to low, however you want it to be. Now, since this is a tortoise, it's an output, so you need to make sure that your input function is none. So that is the tortoise as it's configured. Now we're gonna come down here and look at the events. I'm still dealing with the tortoise, but you've got six events. And you can see this first event has a string of numbers, and then those last two numbers will change. So event one is zero, zero, event two, zero, one, zero, two, zero, three, zero, five, excuse me, zero, four, zero, five. So these are what you're going to manipulate, so to speak, that what you want your tortoise to do. So event one is the action. This, when this occurs, this number, when this occurs, we want it to become on and active. Okay, now the second event, when this event occurs, zero, one, we want it to go off inactive. That's all we really need to do for the tortoise. So now we're gonna come up here to where the push button is. And we can see the push button is going to be an input. Okay, so we've got our output function to none. We've got this low, and I never can remember. Uh, one, is when you push the button, it happens immediately. I think that's high. And then when you release the button, it goes back to a low. I think I prefer high. That way you get an immediate response from the tortoise when you press the button, not when you release the button. Okay, and then we have the function of the input. You have normal, none, and alternating. We want it to alternate in this case. So every time we push the button, it's going to alternate between uh, on and off as described in the previous. So now we've got this configured. What we're gonna be dealing with the input is this event will be sent. That's the key here. We're dealing with the input. So when we push the button, this string of numbers is gonna get sent out on the LCC bus. But we don't want this string of numbers. What we want is down here when this event occurs. We know that we've got this set up to, eat, to be on and off, event zero zero is on, event zero one is off. So what we wanna do is we wanna copy this, go back to our push button, and we want to send that. So in event one, we're gonna paste. And then that is what's gonna be sent instead of what originally came with it. Okay, now we're gonna go back to our Line one, and we're gonna to go to our off event. We're gonna copy it. Come down here to our sent event, and event two, paste it. All right, so now event one is zero, zero, event two is zero, one, and you can see they're completely different from what they were originally. So all this should be configured, and my push button for tortoise number one should work. Let's go see if it does.
All right, it works. I still got some paint that I need to deal with as far as the points go, probably on all of them. I haven't really messed with that yet. Well, that's gonna be it for this video. I'm gonna reward myself with an operating session. I wanna say it's been three years since I've actually operated a model railroad, my little in-scale layout. So I think uh, I'm gonna reward myself and classify some train cars and bring them up here and push them around.